Good morning, fuckers, and welcome to another day at the Daily BM. Mikey, what's up, man? Hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> so glad you're all here to join us. This is a beautiful Wednesday morning. <laughs> I still can't get over here. I just can't, can't do it. I'm so excited to be here. It's you know, I'm jumping right. Morning. I'm jumping right into this shit today. Okay. Boing boing. It's a boing boing boing. Jumping right in. All right, Qbert, let's go. So, yeah, I know today we talk about like men's issues, you know, and with women and women's issues with men. It's kind of where right. we kind of like talk about this on Wednesdays. But here's my thing. You know, I really feel like women often fail at understanding the many challenges of being a male or a man. You know what I mean? Sure, let's go. Would you like me to let's elaborate? <laughs> Would you like me to? Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. So I feel like men have to earn love when it comes from to, from a woman. And I'm about to probably get a lot of hate from the women. But I really believe that we have to earn it. I, I, I feel that. So I feel like <sighs> I feel like we have to put in a lot of mileage <laughs> in the relationship to earn the love versus what we give out the gate. Now some women may fight that, but I feel like women we give we give it to them right out of the gate because we're the one asking them out nine times out of ten for the date. You know, we're <laughs> asking them to get together. You know, and we're and we're trying right. to to we want them to love us. That's what they don't understand. I, I believe the communication problem is is that women don't realize that we want to have a relationship just as much as they do. But I feel like we have to go through the boundaries of earning it. So yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, so it's kind of like, you, uh, ladies, lighten up a little bit, maybe. <laughs> lighten up and stop making us earn it all the time. I mean, just go with the flow. Have you ever, okay, so back when you were dating, or, or let me think about this. So when you were dating your wife now, did you uh, yeah. feel like you had to earn it? Or did you feel like it just flowed good for you and her? Or did it feel a little bit like you had to earn it a little bit? I felt like, no, I felt like it flowed good. I feel like it okay. flowed good with, with my current wife. Yeah, I mean, I, f I feel like it flowed good. In the very um, beginning? Yeah. Yeah, I felt oh, like it flowed good. But you. we're both older. We're both older and a little more mature, so. Okay, so let me back um, it up. Uh, let me back it up to when you were in dating mode. Because I know you were married early, right? To your first yeah, wife? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I know, like, so, bef well, see, even my first wife, like, she did, she chased me more than I chased her. Um, when I've been dating, I do feel like I have to earn, earn it though. Does that make sense? Like I do put mm -hmm. a lot of thought and effort into dates and, and stuff like that. And the women just show up. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that what I sense? Like, Yeah. Like, you does do. that make you... sense? You know, like, yeah. is that like, like when I, like what I mean is like, I go through and I, I, you know, when we're talking, like I'm making mental notes. Sometimes I'm making physical notes of the things they like, their dislikes, you know, favorite foods, locations, colors, things of that nature. And then I try to structure the date around that. So that way it's like all of their favorite things, you know, mm -hmm. um, where, so they just have to show up basically. Like they don't have to put a lot of legwork into it, so to speak. A lot of like planning and organizing and stuff like that. Yeah, they want you to do the heavy well, lifting, so to speak. Yeah, where I feel like a little bit more what I can relate to that you're talking about. Have you heard the song by Dax? Uh, I think it's called "What It's What It's Like to Be a Man." Mm -mm. Um, you should not. check it out after this. Uh, it's a song, and it has Darius Rucker in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it talks about you know what life is like as a man and it's pretty it hits home like it, the first time i heard it i was like oh damn that that's that's pretty damn on point as far as you know what the lyrics are saying and what it's talking about um i should have probably had the lyrics pulled up but of course being super prepared uh uh i don't have it um, and see, this is where I feel, you know, 
like moving into like other things too, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I haven't listened to that. So I wrote it down. Yeah. I'm gonna definitely check this out. But I, I, I feel like I don't want to harp on that one too much. Yeah, but so I, it's almost I like now. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead and read yeah. it. Then. Um, so basically it says, Unconditional loves for women, children, and dogs. Mm -hmm. We know that we just have to play our parts, and we don't. Nobody gives a damn about our broken hearts. Yeah, as a man, we got to pave our way. Our only function is to work and slave. There's no respect for you if you ain't paid. You're just regarded as a human, and you can't complain. And if you ever make it up and actually reach the place and find a woman that loves you and gives you her last name, you'll feel the things – that you provide is the only reason why she stays. And then um, the next set of lyrics after there's a lot, but it's pretty sad because it basically says, um, there we go. It's the circle of life. Uh, as a man, you provide. They don't know what you're worth till the day that you die. And that's when they start crying, then they move on to another man to confide. And then it, it goes on into the chorus. Um, but it's a really – like the, the level was really like hit home because it's like there's so much emphasis on men as providers. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to get a lot of hate on what I'm saying right now. But it's like you were only worth a damn when you're able to provide. You know, whether you're, when you're able to provide in the bedroom, when you're able to provide financially, you know, support, security, all of those things. The minute that that starts to wane or fall away, you know, most women look for the door, in my hmm. opinion. What's your thoughts? Yeah, I agree. I mean, they do. Yeah. They, they they usually head right for the door. <laughs> I, I I can't yeah. disagree with you on this, man, because I, I think we're going to be like an agreement on half the shit that I'm about to say, because uh, I made a little bullet points. OK, right. uh, I took some information that I found on the Web. So, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of goes hand in hand with like men are expected to be stoic. You know, yep. like we we need to cry from time to time ourselves. But, I, you know, but it gets front because every man should have ice veins, you know, and be strong and they should be mm -hmm. resilient and they should always have that. Nah, we can handle it all. But, you know, it's, it's just like we talked about on men's health in the past. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily always the truth. We hide it very fucking well. So I think, like, even – I mean, if it's an occurring thing where you're doing it every day or every week, yeah, then you need to go seek some help because, I mean, there's an underlying root issue that you're not addressing. But I, yeah. I'm thinking once in a blue moon when the stress has just reached its bullying point and you just have an emotional breakdown, you know? I still try not to do it in front of anybody, but you need that as a man. I don't know about you, but I know I need that. I mean, I, I'm, oh, I'm going to sit here yeah. right now and tell you I have cried on many occasions when I've just reached a stress level that I can't just fucking take it. Oh, yeah, like yeah. I mean, It's like a I, steam I, I pot feel, just ready to go, you know? I feel that. It's <laughs> just the frustration and the level of, uh, you know, anger that builds up and despair. Um when you're in those situations like that, 100%, mm -hmm. and there's nothing left to do. And the, you know, crying is the way the body releases that emotion. Like it releases the tension and the stress and the, um, you know, and some, it's like, you know, it's weird because sometimes I just want to go hit things. And then sometimes I'll just lose it emotionally. Like I'll just be like, oh, God, right. you know, and, um, because sometimes the hitting, sometimes it's both like a combination of the two, you know, like I'll go out and beat the crap out of the uh, heavy bag in the garage because I'm just like at wits end. And I'm just like, I just got so much so I, frustration. I go out there on the weekly me. and kick the shit out of that thing, dude, or I don't know what I would do. Seriously. I kick yeah. the shit out of that thing. All the, not physically kick it, but I mean, beat the shit out of it. Uh, just to get the, uh, that emotional but, discharge. Yeah. So to speak. I mean, that's, that's what makes it so challenging is that <sighs> as a man, when you feel like you're not providing, it's the worst because you feel like you're worthless. Like you have no sense of value. Uh, it was an, it, there was a thing in World War II um, in England that I, I read, and I, I didn't do a lot of fact-checking on it, but I did read it, and I do like the story. So I didn't really want to fact-check it, but I believe it's true. 
where they needed cab drivers in the in, in England, uh, drive an ambulance, not cab. Uh, it was cab and a uh, ambulance drivers, I believe. So they mm -hmm. went to like the mental ward, and you know there was a lot of men that were depressed in there and having like issues. Mm -hmm. Um, and once they gave those men jobs and a sense of worth, they mostly recovered because now they had something. They felt like they were valued and they were needed. So like if you give a man a job, like he will feel like he ha adds value and he's worth it. But if you don't, then he's going to collapse, you know, in his own depression and despair because he feel like he's not contributing. Like he's not like what's his purpose? Like what's why is he there? Where I don't feel like women necessarily feel that. Yeah. I mean. Or maybe I, I think they are now, we... now more. Because we're different generations. Uh, well, maybe the new generation yeah, we're different is different generations. To that more. Yeah, I was going to say. Than it's the new generations, a... you know? Now, that being said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it to a whole other level. Because I've, I've run into this issue myself at times. Where we're expected to be romantic first i mean initiate I, yeah to initiate whether it's sex or even just any type of physical contact so that is a big deal to me as an individual because as a guy that tells me that you're interested in me that i'm still you're i mean i know this sounds you know whatever whatever guys you can call me a pussy whatever you want to say it but it's the truth deep down inside you all know it's true the reality is you want to be wanted to desired yeah you want desired that's a good word to use right there desired we want to be desired, desired just like the woman just like the woman wants to be desired or get looked at from across the room and hit, make eye contact with a guy that's like right. giving her the eye we want the same one we want that girl to double take when they look at us yes now, you, you know in some cases you know we won't get that double take except god damn you're ugly but uh, you know but uh, i'm just saying if you're ugly and joe dirty then you're ugly and joe dirty bro but uh, I, you know, I have to be honest. Since I've like started really picking up my physical fitness, um, it's started to change. I've been getting a lot more compliments lately, yeah. uh, and I even noticed today when you walked up um to the vehicle uh to give me the bar of soap with the little guy on it that looks just like you. Um, <laughs> yeah, fuck off. We'll talk about we'll that next week. We'll take a, we'll take a picture. Of, we'll take take a picture of him. Put on Instagram on the on the Monday episode. Um, Correct. But but uh. I noticed, I was like, he, you know, you look like you're slimming down and you're getting that more triangle shape as opposed mm -hmm. to that pear shape that we had going on for a while, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, and I got a lot more, long, I got a little, little, little more ways to go than you do. Um, but I've already started to notice, you know, like a difference in people's perception because I'm starting to look like I lift and I'm starting to look leaner and my clothes is, I'm, I'm wearing, better fitting clothes because right. I'm not having to buy things that, you know, are two sizes bigger than what they need to be. So it makes my shoulders look really small and my, just to cover my stomach. Right. And I, and that's, that's definitely making a, you know, a big impact on my self-esteem and my, my uh, confidence. Um, and I feel like it's going to make a difference in my relationship too. Cause it's, I've, I don't know if, have you noticed like when other women desire you, it makes your woman step up more? Yes, of course. Because then they start to wonder, oh, well, if they're checking him out. I got to pick my shit up. And it, cause it goes yeah. both ways for guys too. I mean, if your woman's hot and you're like letting yourself look like a big slob, you know, damn well, your insecurities get, start building up. Right. Especially if she stops giving you any, you know, pute and, you know, any attention. I mean, there's an old saying, if you ain't taking care of business, somebody else will. I hate to say it. Right. It's a shitty expression, but it's fucking accurate as hell. It's the truth, so, though. So, you know, it's 100% fact. So, you know, you have to take care of yourself as a, as a man. Um, you can't, you know, it's funny. You, again, I'm sidetracking a little bit from what we're talking about, but right. I literally well, no, pay attention. Same vein. I pay attention a lot more to the people coming in and out of a room way more now than what I ever have. And it actually motivates me not to eat certain things. Like when I see oh, them yeah. walking in and out of a room, because literally I sat the other night, I was at a <laughs> restaurant here locally. Okay. Right, right. And every person that walked through that door, except for maybe 2%, 2%. Okay. That walked through that door was 
morbidly obese. Ooh, that's horrible. I mean, seriously. And what I mean by that is butt guts. Uh, their guts are bigger than their tits. You know, and I'm talking about a dude. Same with the women. I mean, they look like a they look like a vanilla ice cream cone. That's how they were shaped. From you know what I mean? Ouch, yeah. <laughs> like the little, ripple effect like going down. Yeah, it's narrow yeah, at the yeah, neck yeah. and starts getting layered fat, 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 where you could hide like yes. the sausage underneath it and never see it for a month. I mean, that's what it, they looked uh, like. And I mean, it was, and it got me thinking. I was like, damn, I was right there on my way easily to being just like that until I decided to get my shit together. Yeah, um, enough was enough. And I'm not talking shit. It's just that if we are all constant battle with the constant processed foods and the shit we eat, that, that yeah. is not good for you. And I mean, I, I know it's a whole other subject, but, but it still goes back to what I'm saying. So, well, it's it's part of that. Are, it's part of that problem or process, right, not so, problem. But. So, so it's expo- But getting back to where you're expected to make the first move romantically, if mm-hmm. you want your significant other, woman, man, whatever, to make a move on you, then you need to step up your game physically as well. Because maybe, honestly, I hate to say it, maybe they ain't attracted to you. Like, I know, like you get older and you have certain things, like you know. Uh, you have health problems that get in the way, especially if you're a female and you got female problems going on. I get it. Mm-hmm. The last thing they want to do is be touched if they feel gross. All right. right? Same thing with All the right. dude. I mean, if you had an elephantitis ball sack, you know, happening, you definitely don't want her going down there giving you a blowjob. I don't know. Maybe I would still fucking do it, but that's just me because <laughs> I'm a sick fuck. I'm going to think about me right there because we're dudes. But uh, grab, so the maybe that wasn't a, grab the basketballs. Maybe, yeah, yeah, just grab those big Ripple. balls, baby. You got this. Da, 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 da. Shoot. <laughs> but um, so maybe that wasn't a good comparison. But I think women are more just sensitive. Call me than super that. scrotum. Yeah, super scrotum, man. But I think that. Uh, Women have a tendency to lean more towards they don't want to be touched right. if they're having female issues. So, you know, but what they don't realize, though, is men can get lonely, too. So, you know, we need that interaction. And it doesn't necessarily always have. To, I mean, there's always the standing joke. A massage always leads to sex. Yeah. In most cases, it does for a man because, you know, we're wired that way. But we also do just want the appreciation, the, the well, touch I, and things of that yep. nature. I don't know we if you listen to that. I don't know if you listen to Andy Stumpf, uh, Cleared Hot podcast. It's one of my favorite yes, podcasts I, have listened I listen to. Him. to. He's really good. So I like his podcast. He did, uh, he did a um, Rapid Fire Friday um, mm-hmm. episode, and one of the people that wrote in – that's where people write in and he answers. He answers like three questions on the episode. And one lady wrote in, and she was talking about her husband, and she was asking ways to support him. And I think Andy's answer hit home because – he said, there's nothing better than when my wife walks over to me, wraps her arms around me, tells me that she loves me, that she supports me, and that she's proud of me. There's, he said, there's no better feeling as a man knowing that your woman's in your corner, no matter what. Um, if you can hear me, Mike, so, yes, my headphones have completely cut out on me. I can't hear shit. So if uh, you want to take us out and we can pick up where, or unless you've got something else to say, because I can't hear a fucking so, thing you're saying. So. <laughs> so Brad's obviously having we're having technical difficulties over here, you know, with me spilling coffee on my. Uh, Let me see if I can get them back. Just go ahead. Keep talking. my. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Brad. So with me spilling coffee on my computer the other day and Brad now having technical difficulties, it's just I were plagued by the inter- Internet problems. But what I was going to say is, is that, you know, as a man, there's no better feeling than having your woman wrap her arms around you and tell her that she loves you and that you're the most important thing to her. So, you know, with that said, I think this is a good time for us to head out. Oh, I, I can think hear Brad you. might be back. I am back. Brad's back. He's back. He can lead us I out. Am, I, 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 I was about to do the shittiest exit in the whole world. I, I, <laughs> I am really sorry, guys. I, I didn't get to hear anything you said, so I hope it was really fucking so, cool. <laughs> yeah, basically just a recap real fast. I'll recap it for the third time since I did a second <laughs> recap on the way out. What I said was in Andy, Andy Stump's episode on Cleared Hot, Rapid Fire, um, one of the re- le- listeners wrote in and asked how she can support her man. It was a very well-written email, but and it was very long, so I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but the, the gist of it was how can she support her man? And Andy replied, he's like, there's nothing better than when my wife comes over to me like unprovoked, like un uh instigated wraps her arms around me 
tells me that she loves me and that she supports me and that she's proud of me. He said, there's no better feeling in the world that energizes me more and makes me want to go out and kick more ass than having that happen. And I can't agree with him more. Like that is a huge motivator for me and a huge uh, moral boost. You know, when someone, when your, when your wife or girlfriend or significant other tells you they're proud of you and they love you, you know, and they're there with you because it's just something about being in, having someone in the trenches with you, you know, like that is what matters. Um, you know, it's it's funny you say female. that. Yeah. It's funny you say that. And I'm going to close on these, on this particular, on that particular uh, that you're just talking about, because it, yes. it went, I was getting ready to just say, we rarely receive compliments. Right. And we're criticized for taking care of our own needs. So yes. you literally, he just answered all that in one follow-up. So mm -hmm. yeah, what a great, great one. So guys, sorry again. I had a little technical difficulties. The episode before, Mike had coffee on his fucking laptop for going for a swim in coffee land. And I had a technical glitch. Uh, so coffee sorry about land. that. I know Mikey's quite capable of, of carrying the show on his own. So uh, hey, don't forget. Just like that, we lost all the listeners. Yeah, just like that, everybody signed out. But anyway, yeah. that being said, don't forget to head over to dailybm.com where you can follow us on all of our socials. You can also find us on YouTube and on the um, Rumble, and you can like and follow over there or subscribe, whatever the hell it is, and on that thing. too. Don't forget to head over to masondangerbeardco.com where you can get 20% off all of their products by just using Ooh. the promo code Daily BM. Remember, it's just Daily BM, 20% off. Uh, Mikey, got anything before we get out of here? Hey, everybody, have a great day. Hope you have uh, a minimum of women <laughs> troubles today <laughs> yeah. on this beautiful hump day. Hump day! Go get Listen. it. Be sweet. That's for T-Stone. There you go. And all I'm going to say is, you know, it just, it just popped into my head. Be just be nice. Be nice. Say hi to your neighbor. Say hi to everybody. I, I don't know why that just popped into my head before we got out of here, but it, it's be the change you want to see in the world. And with that, we'll catch you fuckers on the flip side. Have a good one. This is. <laughs>